What it is, what it do, Southern world. It is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Brown. And this is the Ash Said It Show. I appreciate all of the love and support. Over 1,800 episodes, half a million streams and growing. None of this is possible without you guys. So I thank you so very, very much for all of your love, all of your support. Now, you guys know, I, I mean, it, you guys have heard me at different events, enjoying different libations and spirits and such. So, yes, I, I, I like to, you know, to dip into the pool of different alcoholic adult beverages. So today we have with us author of Bourbon 101, Albert Schmidt. Hey, Albert. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Awesome. So, Albert, what part of the world are you at today? Uh, say that one more time. I said, what part of the world are you at today? Oh, okay. I'm I'm down in uh, Florida, Tallahassee, Ooh, Florida. Okay, Tallahassee. Yeah, I know you guys enjoy some good spirits out there, liking that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, Albert, what was the inspiration behind this book, Bourbon 101? Well, you know, during the pandemic, I was uh, sort of reflecting over uh, really the last two decades. Mm. And um, I keep running into people and uh, they have these ideas of what bourbon is. Mm. And a lot of times, that what they believe bourbon is and what it really is are two completely separate things. And one of the great, I guess, myths about bourbon is that bourbon has to be made in Kentucky, which is not true. It <laughs> can be not. made anywhere in the United mm-hmm. States. <laughs> so, Albert, what classifies a, a beverage, an alcohol, being a bourbon? Well, there's a whole list. Uh, and I guess the biggest one is that it has to be made from corn. So 51% of the mash has to be from corn. One of the interesting things about that is, and I've known that for a long time, uh, even beyond 20 years. Um, and when I was living in Kentucky, uh, we had, uh, I had a, a chance meeting with, uh, one of the master distillers for Woodford Reserve, whose name was Lincoln Henderson. Mm-hmm. And Lincoln Henderson's name is now on Angel's Envy. Um, mm-hmm. And he offered to buy me a drink. And at the time, uh, I had a misconception. And I said, well, I, I can't drink bourbon because I'm allergic to corn. And he said, well, what you're allergic to is distilled out. So today you're drinking bourbon. <laughs> and so that started a whole new avenue for me, and I was living in Kentucky at the time. Mm. Uh, and so then I, you know, that's like being at Napa Valley for wine. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it's you know the some of the best bourbon. Ninety five percent of all bourbon is made in Kentucky. Mm. And so I thought I probably should, you know, sink into this just a little bit more. And mm-hmm. so I started making contacts and that sort of thing. But so to answer your question, so it's 51 percent corn um, and then there's a whole bunch of things on the still. So it has to come off the still at no more than 160 proof, can't go into the barrel more than 125 proof. Mm. Um, When it comes out, they cut it with water, but it can't go below 80 proof. Mm. And um, then it has to be aged for so long in barrels and uh, if it's aged to a particular level, then you can put an age statement on it. Um, and so it, one of the things that I found out was that bourbon, and, you know, we here in the United States, we have a lot of freedom, mm-hmm. but bourbon is one of the most regulated spirits in the world, mm. which always speaks to its quality. Yeah. Wow. That is pretty cool. See, I'm, lear- I'm learning more and more. <laughs> learning more and more about bourbon. So how long did this book take to complete, Albert, from start to finish? I was able to do it in pretty short order, in, in part because of uh, the pandemic. Mm. So, um, you know, we I teach online and uh, then write on the side. And so I had my weekends. 
And it was actually one of the best writing experiences I've had. Oh, wow. Um, and, and a lot of it was reflection. So I was thinking about, um, you know, this one time, you know, this one time when I was uh, interacting with uh, the master distiller from Jim Beam, mm. uh, Fred No. And, or it was an interaction with um, uh, the master distiller at, at Wild Turkey. Uh, or, you know, the master distiller at Woodford Reserve. And mm-hmm. so um, those are always memories in the back of my mind. Yeah. And, um, you know, they were wonderful little stories to tell. And every single story, there are 10 lessons in the book. Mm-hmm. Each story has a sort of a point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, but I tell these wonderful stories. Another story that I tell is is about being a judge at a, a bourbon contest every year where um, <laughs> chefs and bartenders are paired together and the chef comes up with a dish made with bourbon and the bartender has to serve a cocktail that's made with bourbon. And they do sort of a pairing. Um, and I was that was a wonderful experience doing four years uh, of that. Yeah. And uh, I tell that story also. And, and some of the some of the chefs and some of the bartenders were people that I knew. Mm. So it, it was always, <laughs> you know, always a little strange doing that. Yeah, definitely. So ultimately, what do you want readers to get from this book? Well, I hope, I hope that readers uh, come away from the book. Um, I know that sometimes people, especially when, you know, like wine, for example, there's so much to know about wine. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes it can be a little intimidating. Yeah. And, you know, as I stated a little bit earlier about all of those regulations related to bourbon, some people uh, might be intimidated by that. But mm-hmm. my hope is is that they will um, be intrigued by that and maybe will try it. And then the other thing, and this is the most important thing, if you think a bourbon is good, then it is. Mm-hmm. Don't take other people's word for it. People's uh, palettes are different. One mm-hmm. of the uh, one of the things that I talk about uh, in the book is the difference between my palate and my father's palate. Mm-hmm. And my father loved bourbon. Um, he was uh, a, a Presbyterian minister. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my earliest memories was of him drinking a glass of bourbon. He had had a rough day. uh, And he would always say, you know, I need one finger or two fingers of bourbon. Um, And, um, but he really liked weeded bourbons. And Mm -hmm. so we're, you know, think Maker's Mark, think Old Mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, that type of thing. And I tend to like, I don't like all bourbon, but I I tend to like the high rye bourbons. Mm -hmm. So it, so the, the palate on those are two very different things. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I'm right. And I'm not saying that he was right. It's just different. It's different. And so, um, you know, people need to, to walk away and find their own adventure with bourbon. Mm. So okay. you can, you can read what I wrote, yeah. but in the end, it's your journey. Yes. I love that. So basically what you're saying is trust your palate. I love it. I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. If if you walk away, if you take the bourbon mm-hmm. and you walk away and say that's it, mm. um, then it is, and it doesn't matter what anybody else says. I like that, Albert. What is the best way for people to keep up to what you're going? You know where you're going, what you got going on, and what's next for you. Well, they can always, uh, they can find me on Facebook and they can also find me um, sometimes on Instagram. Okay. And then uh, my website, which is albertschmidt.com, and that's A L B E R T S C H M I D dot com. And everybody wants to add that T, but the T doesn't exist on my name. <laughs> I love it. Albert, thank you so much for coming through and sharing a little bit of your insight with us today. Certainly appreciate that. (laughs) Oh, you bet. My pleasure. All right. And I'm going to have to dime you as my bourbon expert. Okay. So the next time we got some bourbon questions and stuff, I got to hit you up, Albert. I'm just putting it out there. 
I'm always available for you, Ash. <laughs> Perfection. Thank you so much. And um, and you thank bet. you to, to each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. Keeping in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face, you tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys. <laughs>